Let's have a little prayer. Our loving God, I ask you, Lord, to send your Holy Spirit to fill this church. Fill this church so that the words from the pulpit will be a blessing through the Holy Spirit to the ears that hear. I pray in your name. Amen. The word for today, the sermon word for today is abundant. Abundant is a very important word. The Lord impressed the writers of the Bible to use it more than 71 times. Abundant is a descriptive word. It's an adjective. It's a word that describes like plentiful, ample, generous, overflowing. Let's read what the the Bible has to say about abundant in John 10, 9 and 10. John 10, 9 and 10 says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. I come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Example, one of these many examples in the Bible, it's found in John 2. It's the story of the water to wine. It happened in Cana of Galilee. It was early in Jesus' ministry. Never before had Jesus performed a miracle to show his godly powers. Young Jesus had befriended several people. Some of them had become his disciples. I believe Jesus to be a very popular with his contemporaries. And he was popular because he was kind. He was honest. He was smart, His, he was respectful, especially to women. He was a true friend, he was non-judgmental, and he was truly interested in people. Jesus and his friends were invited to a wedding. Now this was not just any wedding, it wasn't an ordinary wedding, this is where Jesus was going to perform his very first miracle. Most likely his mother Mary was a wedding coordinator. Back in Jesus' days, weddings went on for sometimes several days. There were a lot of guests there. It was a high time. Matthew 19, 6 says, it's a forever time. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Jesus was celebrating with his friends. Undoubtedly, they locked arms, got around, went la, 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 la. All right, Jesus could sing, <laughs> and he knew how to dance, I'm sure. The parents of the bride often supplied the location of the wedding. They provided the food. They provided the entertainment. The groom was to supply the wine. Now this was actually grape juice. So when I say wine, you're gonna say grape juice. Thank you. The bride lovingly reminded the groom, you have two things to remember. One, don't be late. Two, bring enough wine. He replied, yes, my love. I'll take care of everything, don't you worry. Sometime during the wedding, Jesus' mother asked Jesus to step, a, step aside, and he said, she said, the very worst possible thing has happened. We're out of wine. The good news is, Jesus, you're going to fix that. Jesus said, but mother, where? How? And mom said, take these six water pots, 
each of them holding between 20 and 30 gallons. That would be 100, approximately 150 gallons. And fill them up. And don't but mother me get busy. Jesus asked the servants to take the, the pots into the kitchen and fill them with water. He then asked the servants to leave and he prayed over them. He said, Honor your mother and your father and give glory to God. Please help me, Father. You know what happened. You know the story. 150 gallons of wine. When Jesus saw the father bride embrace and compliment the groom, his new son-in-law, the smile on his bride's face on the bride's face, the amazement look in the faces of his disciples. Jesus got it. I'm here to bring life and bring life more abundant. Jesus is very concerned with all our needs. He's concerned with what food we have to eat, with what we have to drink. It's not his plan for us to have loss of limbs, bowel obstructions, joint replacements, headaches, bumps and scratches, broken homes, broken hearts, and much, much more. He wants to give us an everlasting, abundant life. Let's read about this life in Matthew 6, 31 to 34. Matthew 6, 31 to 34. Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. But your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble for its own. You all remember the story of the, of the fish, first story of the miracle fish. This, uh, this story takes place in Luke 5. It's very early in Jesus' ministry. Jesus came to preach. He came to the Lake Galilee, and he came to preach. And he said to Peter, he said, you notice there's a lot of people um, gathering here. There's more that can probably hear me and see me. And I was wondering, Peter, would you mind taking me out in your boat so these people can see and hear me better? And being that Peter didn't have anything else to do, he hadn't caught anything. He's probably stitching his nets. He said, sure, Lord, hop in. So he took Jesus out of ways, and Jesus preached to these multitudes of people, multitude of people, the Bible says. I can't help but think that he was telling them about his plan for them in heaven, his plan for them to live with him forever and for them to have a life, life more abundant. And when he was through preaching, he said to Peter, he said, hey, Peter, throw your net into the water. And Peter said, uh, teacher, I've been fishing all night. There are no fish. Um, we're in shallow water. And there's a lot of people looking right at us right now. Jesus said, Peter, please throw your net into the water. Jesus threw his, Peter threw his net into the water. And you know the end of the story. So full of fish that he couldn't pull it out. He had to ask his friends to help him. They filled his boat and another boat. Jesus, after that, pulled Peter aside and said, Peter, I'd like to talk to you for a minute. He said, you know, Peter, you can see it's obviously to you now. I can perform miracles. I can supply you with abundance of food, fish. 
I have something better in store for you, though. I want for you to be abundant fishermen of men. Please follow me. That's a great story of abundance, and I like it every time I read it. The one I'd like to share with you more today is found in John 21. This, this took place later in Jesus' life here on earth. He'd already died on the cross and he'd been resurrected. And it was just with him and his disciples. It also happened on the Sea of Galilee. At this time there, there was only Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, and a couple more. We're going to call this the miracle of the 153 large fish and the net that did not tear. Now I googled what fish there were on the Sea of Galilee, and there were small pan fried fish, but this in the Bible it says they were large fish, and the large edible fish on the Sea of Galilee are called binny, B-I-N-Y, I'd never heard of it, but these fish, Google says, are 13 to 15 pounds, so if you take 153 and malt up multiply that by 115, they had a ton of fish. They were going to catch a ton of fish. This is a great story. Let's read about it in John 21, 1 to 11. John 21, 1 to 11. After these things, Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he manifested himself in this way, first to Simon Peter, then to Thomas, called Ditmus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They answered back and said, we'll also go with you. They went out and got into the boat, it says, one boat. And that night they caught how much? Nothing. But when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, children, you don't have any fish, do you? And they answered to him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you will find fish. So they cast, so they cast and then they were, there were so many, they couldn't haul it in for the great number of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, He put his outer garment on, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the shore, about 100 yards, and they dragged the net full of fish. So when they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire already had been laid, and fish placed on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three. And although there were so many fish, the net was not torn. After this experience, I know these guys have been fishing all night and they were quite hungry. So Jesus took care of their first need. They They were fed. He gave them probably the best breakfast they'd had in a long time. Again, Jesus pulled Peter aside and said, Peter, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you love me? Peter said, of course I love you, Jesus. Feed my sheep. Second time he asked Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. 
The third time he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter at this time said, you know I love you, Lord. I can read your, you can read my mind. You know I love you. Jesus said, please feed my lambs. My folks, we, folks, we are all following Jesus. If we are followers of Jesus, that makes us all disciples. He, he pleads for all of us to feed his sheep. Feed his lambs. Tell him that he has a life for us planned, a life forever and a whole lot more abundant. I know you all have yourself a story that you you know of yourself or someone else who's had an abundant uh, experience with God. It's my pleasure to be able to share this story with you. It's a true story and it happened in 1984. I was living in a little town called Paradise, California. I had been married and divorced. I was living in the fast lane and making the devil proud. I had seemingly forgot all the years my parents had read to me from the Bible and put me through 12 years of Christian private school. It was a hot July day and I had just got off work from Orville, California. It's about 25 miles from Paradise. I was coming around a corner on a two-lane highway, and there was a log truck in the middle of the road holding up traffic. Good grief, I was in a hurry. There was a cold beer waiting for me at home in my fridge. I was on a crotch rocket motorcycle and downshifted two times, and I was off, passing. Passing everybody, looking good. Got all the way up to the very first car behind the log truck and the dear lady made a left-hand turn onto a gravel road. Well, my bike went fast, but it didn't stop that fast, and I hit her broadside. It broke my left clavicle and scapula, twisted my vertebrae, gave me a major concussion, bruised my spleen, and it knocked me out. I don't know how long I'd been out. The bad news, I totaled my motorcycle. I don't know how long I was out, but when I came to, the ambulance was there, and there was an EMT bent over me. What I heard next, I'll never forget. The little lady came over that was in the car that I hit and said, is he dead? The nurse said, lady, get back in your car. The truth is, my friends, I was not dead. I lived. And there's only one reason why I lived. Because my loving, merciful creator said, Jim deserves another chance, doesn't deserve another chance, but I'm going to give him one anyway. I'm going to give him a life and a life more abundant. That was 37 years ago. Since then, I've had two children. I've had a lovely wife. And I'm here in Sierra Vista, South the Avenue Church, telling you, Jesus loves you. He has a plan for you. He wants for you to live forever and more abundant. You may ask yourself, how is it possible to have this abundant and forgiving life? Let's turn to 1 John 2, 1 and 2. We're going to be in John for 3, 1 John. We're going to go first to 1 John 2, 1 and 2. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is a sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins, but also for the whole world. Talk about abundance. He's provided forgiveness for everyone on this earth who chooses to love him. While we're in 1 John, let's go to 1 John 3, 1. Just down a little bit, or over a little bit. See how great the love the Father has bestowed upon us that we could be called children of God. We're his family. He has chosen us to be his kids. 
He has great plans for us, plans to live forever. Let's also go to John 2, 25. This is the ultimate, my friends. This is the ultimate abundance. This is the promise which he has given to us. This is the promise which he himself made to us. What is it? Eternal life. Eternal life in Jesus. Believe and he will give you the desire of your hearts. Now I know that... um, Jesus was a scholar of the Bible. I know he probably memorized all the Old Testament, but I'm quite sure that he knew he loved Psalms. For my closing text today, I'm going to read, I'd like for us to read together Psalms 37. It's 37, 3, 4, and 5. Psalms 37, 3, 4, and 5, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will do it. My friends, to have life and life more abundant, only one way to get that, and that is to delight yourself in the Lord.